After my injury, um, I started my period almost immediately because I specifically remember um, being told after my injury that it would be some time um, and that it's not uncommon for females to um, skip their periods for some time after their injury. And I was like, yes. And then like two weeks later, I started my period and I was like, the universe hates me. Spinal cord injured women would have periods like anyone else. It's personal preference how someone would want to manage it, whether it be a tampon or a sanitary napkin. However, managing the skin would be really important, making sure there's no skin breakdown during that period. After injury, my period returned about two months. So I was still in the hospital. And until recently, I just, um, just let it cycle like normal. But I think the beginning of January, I started going on birth control and I take it all the time. Um, so I don't have periods anymore. I would say somewhere maybe between four and six months before I got a cycle again. Um, it initially came back very light and then all hell broke loose. I started off were utilizing tampons, um, but I needed, that was still something that I needed to know whether or not I was gonna be lubricated enough to use a tampon. And I was able to use those in the first half of my injury for about 10 years. But over time, I was able to use birth control to manage my period so that I only have to deal with it every three months. And by doing so, it's lightened up my period enough where I'm not able to use tampons because I'm not lubricated enough to do it. Um, or otherwise I'll experience some symptoms of autonomic dysreflexia. I don't have sensation, but my body does respond to discomfort. So I'm very attuned with my body. Um, if I start to feel clammy or dysreflexic, usually, if, it's, if I know it's not the bathroom, then there's discomfort somewhere. Are my toes balled up in my shoes? Um, is something uncomfortable? And if it's, if it's a time when I'm on my cycle, my mind immediately thinks tampon. As far as breast cancer prevention, it wouldn't be much different in the spinal cord population. Breast exams, self-exams would still be very important. Mammography, all of those things are still important. Should I be doing them? I'm only 32. Yes? I know, I know. Okay. I recommend everybody get a mammogram. I'm guilty of not doing them all the time, but I do do them so that I make sure if I can identify something, I'm into the doctor to, uh, to have them look at it. Yes, I do monthly self breast exams um, because breast cancer is right up in my family. Um, so far, so good. But yeah, I know how important it is. I do my monthly exams uh, because it's, I'm at that age in life that I have to do it. But it means more to me now because I just uh, lost my sister to breast cancer. But in the beginning, when we would talk and she would say she felt something, she wouldn't go to the doctor. And when she did, it was too late. And it sort of like left a, um, a void in me. Um, she fought for a few years. I was there doing the fight. But since then, not only do I do my breast exam, I'm the birthday card person in the family, remembers everybody's birthday. If I forget, they on the phone calling me. And everybody that's, all the females that's 18 and up, always get these beautiful breast cancer envelopes from me. And the reminder that this is your month, get your mammogram. Another aspect of aging after a spinal cord injury has been my bone density um, has been immensely affected. I have severe osteoporosis um, throughout my thigh bones, all the way down, and I have osteopenia in my hip area and lower thoracic. So as far as bone density following a spinal cord injury, everyone loses um, bone mass as they age. But in a spinal cord injured patient, that loss occurs a lot faster. Unfortunately, in the spinal cord population, we see a lot of occult fractures, um, not from an injury per se, but something as simple as a transfer. And sometimes you don't even know you've fractured anything until you get dysreflexic or something like other symptoms. I just recently experienced something where 
I broke my ankle pretty severely and had no indication of it. There are uh, several different medications on the market for bone density. In women who have spinal cord injuries, most of those end up not being as advantageous as they are in the general population. So we look at more exercise, weight bearing, different um, mechanisms that they can do from a physical standpoint and move away a little bit from the medication management piece of it. As I've aged after my injury, I personally haven't noticed any changes in regards to my bowels. Um, I have noticed um, some changes in regards to my bladder. Uh, bladder is, you know, encompassed by some muscular bandages and just like the rest of my body, those can start to atrophy as well. Eating right, especially getting a good vegetables and fiber is gonna make all the difference in the world with your bowel program and, you, and constipation. Um, so you don't have to constantly be taking um, a lot of things to make you go. You, you have a natural good bowel movement. It's hard for anybody to lose weight once they gain, but in a wheelchair, it's even harder to lose weight once you gain. I realized my bladder just wasn't gonna snap back on its own or my bowels. So I started investigating it just last year and it was very hard to find a pelvic floor therapist that's neuro. A lot of them are pelvic floor therapists dealing with women after they've given birth or older women. Um, but the pelvic floor strengthening exercises are really important at any age. One of the things that you might look for is a pelvic floor physical therapist who's a specialist in your area. Pelvic floor health is important because having a healthy pelvic floor uh, limits the symptoms of incontinence. It can also increase um, sexual satisfaction, both for you and your partner. And it also helps with breathing because it actually supports where all of your organs, as well as your diaphragm, lungs, everything rests within your body. Initially, I was doing intermittent catheters, but about six months after my injury, I switched to a super pubic tube. But with bowel programs and things, I do digital simulation like um, was taught in the hospital. I started off trying digital stem, but it just didn't really seem to work for my body. It was causing accidents all the time from the stimulation. So I swapped to rectal clears and I've been doing them ever since and they seem to work. I do deal with a lot of constipation issues um, and I do go through like phases where some months it'll just be all out of whack and other months everything will just run so smoothly and it'll just be on a set schedule. But I've really learned to watch what I eat and how much of something that I eat and learned what is going to make it better and what's going to make it worse within my diet. So I try to stick to what works. Of course, you have to have more fiber. You got to, you know, eat more prunes, have more sesame seeds there. That's the changes that I got with the bladder. For women, particularly, I would say a quadriplegic, if you're moving towards independence and you really want um, a, a good bladder management system. I know that the super pubic catheters um, is what one thing people recommend, but I love the Mitrofenov. As a young woman, when I first was injured, you know, of course, again, I want to still feel beautiful and sexy. I couldn't get through my head the idea of having a tube sticking out. I'm like, well, what if I get me a man? You know, I don't want no tube sticking out. I want to get down without him looking at the tube first. So the Mitrofenov was a great idea for me because, you know, it's it's discreet um, and I can manage it. I don't have to have any extra equipment. Um, and, um, you know, that worked for me. A lot of people, once they get home and they realize kind of what their groove and their lifestyle will be, may need to change the bowel program because it's, it's, it's hard. Mine's was in the evenings every night, so if I wanted to go to dinner with friends, I had to either time it and try to do the bowel program right before, or I had to leave dinner early and go do the bowel program right after. And I remember one time, it was my friend's bachelorette party. We were supposed to go to dinner and then go out afterwards. Well, I had to go to dinner because of the timing, rush back home, let my parents do the bowel program, get back dressed and try to go back and meet up with them again. And I said, okay, this has gotta change. So I switched my bowel program to the morning. 
And I realized I don't necessarily need to do it every day. So I do it now every other day 